hardware I had available was able to run the OSC platform or it, sometimes it would, but it would do it pretty unstably. Um, so I, I think I need to get a tiny, you know, I could get like a, a small box and it wouldn't set me back. Um, mm. because I got to like the last stage a couple times, but then it got corrupted again. I see. Um, and I think there was some final step that I couldn't figure out of, uh, you know, writing my initials on the plane and knowing that I could extrude in other spots, but not that face. Okay. Spend more time in it. Uh, I would hope to be able to try again. I'm still interested and I, it just it was not a priority for mm. Various life reasons. Well, yeah. The invitation is open. Okay. Oh, thank so you. I'm going to start the recording here. So I'm going to record this so whoever misses this, they can still participate later. Uh, start recording. Upload to Dropbox. Confirm. Okay. So welcome, everybody. So this is. Recording is on. on. Recording is on. Design Sprint, February 22nd, 2019. I do not remember when was the last time we had a Design Sprint. And uh, it's been a year or so ago. Huh, not something like that. But uh, today's topic is the open source golf cart. So it's um, in, um, as part of OSC, we work on a development team. So there's a regular team of contributors. If you go to the OSC developers page on the wiki, uh, today we're taken on a special project, which is actually something we want to build here for mobility around the farm. So at our site here, and turns out that an open source golf cart is pretty much low hanging fruit for uh, what we know how to do. It mixes hydraulics, frames, power cubes, all very modular elements. And in fact, it could be a, a good case of an easy to build project that can even emerge as a potential product. Oh, I want to take you to the, so take a look at this link. This is our, what do we do here? The processes. Now, so I'm going to share my screen. The processes link in the chat box. That is the wiki. That is the working page. So in there's three tools, we use wikis, we use Google docs, and FreeCAD primarily. So click on a page. Um, on the wiki page itself, one of the, the final products that we yield is part library. So if we design something, if we work on something collaboratively, we, we end up uh, putting that into realistic design and that is CAD. So there's no way to escape CAD if you're doing product design, open source product design and FreeCAD is open source. Um, Abe has seeded the part library, so that's really good. So what we want to do, okay, I'm going to open up another tab here or copy, duplicate tab. Uh, so I'm going to edit the working document. So, so when we design, hopefully you had a chance to look at the golf cart document a little bit, but the idea is pretty simple. It's like build a frame, put a power cube on it, put some wheels on it and hydraulic motors. So the idea is to, uh, you know, the concept is there, say, on page three. Um, golf cart is a golf cart. A simple thing that's got um, wheels, a body, and closed body, so it's got rollover protection. A power unit. We're choosing a 16-horsepower power unit, which is uh, the power cube, because we have that in our repertoire of things that we can build and can build very easily at pretty low cost. Now, the one unique feature about this golf cart to make the build very, very simple, as you look at the requirements on page number one, it's got four wheel drive skid steering for super easy build. What's that? Well, you don't even need to put a, put a steering wheel on this if you want to simplify things because the steering wheel has got linkages and more parts. Uh, you can use hydraulics like a skid steer, meaning that you have four wheels. This is going to be four wheel drive. We will use uh, 
four motors, like on one of the later pages. Uh, that's out, motor is outlined on page 12. But if we go to the, the beginning here, skid steering is a way that you can simply take a hydraulic valve and you can s spin wheels on one side or wheels on the other side. And if you s spin all wheels, then you're going forward. If you spin the left set of wheels, you're going to be going right. If you spin the right set of wheels, you're going to be going left. So that's how it works. Um, therefore, very simple. I'm going to set up a page, duplicate slide. I'm going to set up a page, and let's get clear about what goes into this. So we start by generating part libraries and uh, developing them in FreeCAD. So, so parts plus part libraries. Okay, but before that, we're going to ha have a word from the sponsor. So Katarina, <laughs> Katarina, um, you are the use user of this. So maybe can you feed in on... We talked about requirements, but can you tell us about any other special requirements that you have for uh, this vehicle? Okay. Um, well, to make it the, you know, is, can you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you. Okay, great, great. All right. So um, I think it's like mostly a usability um Questions. So we want to make it as useful as possible. And I do understand that this is version one. And you haven't even mentioned that eventually, like down the line, we'd like to add uh, attach, uh, add atta um, mowing attachments to it, a forklift, uh, so you can shovel your snow with it. So just make it like all around the yard and farm useful. Um, but iteration, we're going to focus on transport, just being able to get from point A to point B. Um, now, carrying people is great because, you know, like you can, we do, we do a lot of miles here on the farm and we can get, you know, from point A to point B faster or even just going to town um, in it without having to use the car. But the, the other requirements would be that it can actually has a sort of a little bed in the back to transport stuff because stuff is is the, like we usually we, if we're just going ourselves we can just walk but if we're carrying like soil bags or hay or even jet or anything like that so a little area to carry stuff would be a good one um the other thing is it would be great if it was useful year round even in the midwest where it gets pretty cold so uh, uh if it had like um a cab that could be enclosed with even just canvas or plastic in the winter. And we talked about this much and you said that we could even have heat, right? Yeah. A little fan blowing heat into the cab. Um, yeah. So yeah. I think those are the things that come to mind right now. Nothing. And we didn't say that. Uh, so another thing we're working on is getting students involved in schools. So this would be an excellent competition project. Right. That's that's another thing. Um, as a solar utility vehicle, because you can easily do this, you can turn this into solar, put a bunch of panels on a roof, and it, it could be practical with solar only. That would be awesome. Now, I just got an idea about the heat. So for this version, we were talking about the uh, last meeting, we were talking about the separate power cube, the power cube that has a separate engine and a separate hydraulic slash cooling part. Well, why don't we take that cooling part with the fan and make that the cab heater. So if you have those two things separate, that makes it easier for the heater part. So maybe we could think about that, how that could be done. Because typically the power cubes got the uh, hydraulic reservoir and the engine next to each other. But if we make those two modules, uh, it doesn't matter where we put one, the hot fluid module, which in the winter could be a heater, right? It's just like the heating in your car. It works by a heat exchanger from the fluid, radiator fluid. Uh, here we'd have this, this hydraulic thing with a fan on it that could be blowing hot air inside the cab. So something like that. So heat can be the hydraulic cooler part. Abe, what do you think of that? Okay, can you hear me okay? I, I, yeah. I was thinking the same thing with the heat. That does sound like it, there's possible ways to, yeah, reutilize that. And uh, as I was 
send in the text, um, a, a simple hitch on the back or a pin or some way to attach a small wagon or something, I'm sure would be uh, right. easy to do, right? Yeah. Yep, that's definitely easy. Hitch on the back. Okay. Um, ball hitch or pin. So let's outline all the parts. So everybody, that document is editable. Why don't you y'all go in there? So if, go to the link in the, in the chat box. And we've got Nathan, Jan, Abe, Katerina, Katie, myself. Okay. Um, so go to the document in the chat box. But let's talk about, so let's just start getting right down to it. Uh, first, let's list all the parts. And on the wiki page, the part library is seeded. So as soon as we have files, we upload them to the part library. So first, we're going to get together on, okay, what are all the parts here? So, so make a copy of those bubbles and start putting things in. So motors, um, motor mounting plate, start listing components. You want it in there? Put it in there. We'll draw it up. And the idea is it's modular, so we can we can or cannot include things as needed. So people, yeah, go ahead, uh, start making copies of this stuff and and uh, adding items. That's collaborative development. Now, what you're seeing here is OSC's somewhat pathetic way to do cloud collaborative development. I mean, we've been at it for some time. We're developing, like what you see is somewhat of a prototype process of how we can work together, but the, we're working towards the fact, like the, the key thing is people, the number of people that show up and how many of those people know the basic collaborative literacy on a development process and free cat. But imagine if we work with schools, get hundreds of people that know the process. So right now I'm thinking that the idea like, I'm not hearing Martin anymore. Is it? Oh, did he drop? Yeah, I hey, think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. I think we lost him. All right, he'll he'll come. No, he says he's here. Uh, I just posted a question in the side because um, yeah. I do have a question about components. Uh, How? How does control work for um, skid steering uh, if you don't necessarily need a steering wheel? Does anyone have ideas on that? Because I'm thinking about. Okay, he said wheels. I, Do I was, like if I, mm -hmm. only the wheels steer it is what he was saying, which okay. I think is coming on the tractors. You can do it with two tracks, no. right? So right. the vehicle can spin in a circle simply by turning the wheels on the left and the right sides, the direction that you Which need made, to. Yeah, that sort of made sense. So you're just saying like you have two joysticks, say one yeah. for right and one for left. Uh, you ha I think that one, um, forget. Uh, yeah, it might be one for right or one for left, or it might be, is it one and one for right and left? like a joystick oh, kind of thing. But yeah, Martin should be able to explain that better. He gets back. Oh, no, no. I think I remember now what he said. Okay. The idea was that we could do I think that up to uh, 26 miles per hour and each stick would be like 13. Okay. 
exactly. I think you're telling me something about that because the road legal, it cannot go more than 20 miles per hour. Okay. So I, I guess, um, right. Um, so I guess you were saying that if you make it go 26 miles per hour in the farm, but once you're on the road, it only use one stick, if I understood correctly, but I am, I don't know much about this either. Okay. Thank you. I'm trying to reach Martin on the phone because she's in another building to see if um, what happened. Recording has stopped. I don't know what happened there. I'll share my screen again. Oh, we had stopped recording as well. Yeah. It's like on my, it hasn't started again. Okay. I'm recording on my desktop here, so hopefully that's, it might be any decent. Um, I'm recording okay. as well. And my Excellent. audio recording for the last meeting uh, was, was good, actually, so... I actually, just to note, I, I uh, uploaded a copy of that and I linked it on uh, your recording of the meeting, Martin. Nice. The, the previous one. Okay. So cab, so frame is the same as cab frame. Winter cover is going to be a scumbag for the winter. Solar panel, uh, that's clear. Pitch. What else goes on a frame? Are we going to... Yeah, basic version one. 
Uh, valves, we're going to have to have mounts for the valves. Valve mounts. Um, mount those with bolts. So, so bolts for valve mounts. Uh, controls electrical diagram. Right, left throttles. Okay, for controls, we, okay, electro diagram, that's a thing that comes out, but it's a um, starter switch. The controls. Uh, so there's gonna be a starter switch, which is gonna be connected to the engine, which is gonna have engine start, both like pull, pull start and now electronic, electric start. Right, left throttle is the valves. Um, that's the two cylinder valves. Got it. I had a question about that when you disconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, hoses. If you have cylinders, you have hoses for the fluid. So some hoses, which are outside of the power cube hosing. So hoses. There's a bed. Um, pitch, battery, battery is going to go probably in, uh, so this would be the engine cube. Yeah, where battery would go put in. the battery? I, I think. Yeah, I think that there's probably room enough in the engine cube somewhere to fit it in there, depending on what size it is. But I was starting to think yeah. about the redesign on the power cubes because that's important, and I was thinking of redrawing it uh, pretty quick, easily. I think, but I I, I kind of wonder which way, you know, depending on the design of this, that there's all kinds of possibilities for mounting and, and reworking the separate hydraulic and, and engine power cubes because the hydraulic unit would be mostly a tank with connections and uh, uh, maybe some cooling built in. So it, it could be oriented either more vertically or maybe more horizontally, on, especially in the golf cart if there's a need for different space. So I, recording you know, is on. I wonder what the – there's different possible orientations, I guess, for designing that. Of course, it doesn't mean that the frame of the – cube necessarily has to be that different but you might end up welding in the ports in different places or something like that yeah let's look at the geometry how it lines up in this particular use case maybe use this use case as a way to do this um so maybe when we talk about the hydraulic cooling unit um the way we design that, we should probably do like multiple outlets for so you can run another engine off of that if you have other applications. So maybe do like two two outlet hydraulic cube. Yeah. Yeah, a couple. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Power cube, two hydraulic cooling unit. Because we did last, we did was like four. Um, well, but since I'm going to be building that, you said let's do two. For me. Let's see. You mm. said you want to put four wheel drive on this. Probably is that is that a version one thing uh, for all four yeah, wheel drive? Because, okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Because for traction, I mean, you're going to be really limited if you don't have more than um, traction that can do more than perfectly trimmed lawns on a golf course. Yeah which doesn't happen to be uh, the state of practice farm today. <laughs> okay. But I guess it could be um, just two, let's see, two controls. You just steer the left and yeah, right. Yeah, good steering. Yeah. Kind of. yeah, not, not four-wheel independent steering, I guess, on that. Um, no, just two valves. Each valve is connected to each side. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Do we miss anything? Would this thing, if we put this thing together, would this work? Yeah. I think so. I think we're onto something here. Okay. Um, so let's now, um, what I would like to do now then is let's divide and conquer and, and who can uh, who can take these things? So some of these things are already outlined. For example, for the motors on page 12, I'm going to move this up here. Actually, um, page 13, I'm going to move this up here. So look at the motors, the second one. That's all we need. Did some calculations on it. And the calculations are on page right after that. Um, right there. Page four of the calculation. So that, that explains what's going on there. Um, and that's the motor. So we, we got to draw it up. Let's, uh, let's do that. Who wants to take on the motor? Anyone can do a motor? Let's divvy up tasks. Um, for, and for a first lesson in FreeCAD, uh, you can... You can also learn FreeCAD if you can download FreeCAD 16. I'm telling you, you could possibly do it in an hour uh, with, with my brand new video from last year. Uh, so I'm going to put a link to that. It's under FreeCAD 101, and it wasn't an email. FreeCAD 101, the video number three. Take a look at that workflow tutorial. Draw things in Sketcher, extrude them to 3D, and you can make as complicated things as you like, everything you need for this project that we're working on right now. Um, so I put that link on page one, free CAD tutorial. Anyone ever uses that tutorial, let me know if it's any useful or how we can make it better, because uh, what I'm trying to do is that standard OSC workflow that's always used in how we work here. So FreeCAD tutorial. Idea is that if you can draw, like you can, you can make lines on a two-dimensional screen and then you can extrude them and then you can make further shapes on each face, you can get to infinite complexity in 3D CAD. So, uh, the success of a, of a mass collaboration on this would be if, if a lot of people would learn how to do that, and then we can turn ideas into real technical designs. Okay. Um, I want to do the frame because there's a trick to the frame. Cab frame. So frame... I think that we did that twice. I think that's cab frame. So I'm going to put my name on that. And if possible, I'd like a sort of a recommendation for something that would be good for Please. a noob, uh, something that's sort of traceable that would have a diagram available to trace and make 3D. If that is um the motor then that oh. might work a diagram something something that you trace out on a two-dimensional piece of paper and then make it into 3d yeah oh that's cool it's a good idea i'm looking for um, possible cat sometimes you can find um 2d dimension drawings extra. of things like the motors mm -hmm. and so on so i was trying mm. to look for that but sometimes it's really hard to find that and all you have is like some dimensions on the product page so you just end up kind of guessing, which is can be an issue later. So I'm going to say with the CAD, it's good to try to draw it in parts that are realistic, like how the part or the component is put together itself. So like it's it's this component that's made up of all these other actual parts, and it's good to just draw those and make it in the CAD the way it might actually be built or machined and manufactured because that actually also makes sense in the long term and it's just a convenient way to think about breaking stuff down to draw it in pieces okay yeah so uh, 
Let's see if we can add some names to anything here. I'm just going to seed those names on page number two. Ben, can you do something? Just munching on some dinner there. Can I have some? That might be cereal. My guess is cereal. Um, we got Nathan. Nathan, uh, can you take one of these things on? Let's see. So, okay, on a motor, let's look at how much data we got on a motor. So we click on that. You go to surplus center, which is the source. So when you, whenever something has a blue frame around it, typically means it's hyperlinked. Of course. Uh, if you go there, I will be looking for a diagram that's typically that have parts. Like, let's see, do they have this? Questions. Um, warranty info. No, nothing as far as any kind of drawings. It just has a description. And the best we have is the size. It's the size there is that many inches. Um, so we got to kind of guess here. Okay. Uh, 4.7, 4 and 7 eighths is twice. So that would be, I'm going to guess that's the square face plate on the front. So, so go to FreeCAD le Legacy 0.16 and, um, we can start with that. Um, Four and seven eighths inch for the face plate. That's going to be like one inch thick. If it's 4.53 inches, that I'm assuming is the distance to the back of the motor without the shaft, because that's going to be more than four inches with the shaft. Um, but see, that's a that's unfortunately a guess until we buy the part. And then we can take a look at it. Um, so if someone, yeah, I can just make like a. Rough, I'll, I'll take those for a rough picture and yeah, make it modified. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Anthony, here's a working doc. There it is. Okay, please please go ahead with that. Start with that face plate that's four and seven to eight inches. And uh, that's all we know, sorry. Um, let's see, anyone else? Oh no, hold on a second. So there's one more step you can do. Okay. okay. Um, it says it's a 5.4 cubic inch white part number hydraulic motor in the part description. Take that, Google it. And see if you can pick out a oh, okay, yeah, from got it. The internet. Neat. That's reverse engineering 101. So I'll paste that there. It's white hydraulics. See if see what happens when you Google it. Because I can tell you on the tractor, for example, the micro tractor that we built, once again, the CAD was a guess we guessed how the motor would look and we ended up having to do major reconstructive surgery. We had to actually cut up the frame because the motor wouldn't fit. We had to redo. So that kind of stuff is where in an open source world, you would have all the CAD and FreeCAD already that we can just take it down. But once again, once, once we're done with this project, then we do have that. So that's good. Um, okay. Katie, let me know if you find anything under that Google.
skid steers do have the grass ripping up problem and that's where we're going to have to make the wheelbase narrow enough so so the shape of the frame is going to be five by eight feet and we will need to make the wheelbase tight enough uh, i mean wider as opposed to so skid steering is easier and it's not going to be as good as turning but for simplicity it's good and um yeah okay and i'll continue with that so let's see other parts the engine we've got that we've got that in another part libraries so let's see where that engine is where's the best Engine would be probably under, we did this in Microtrack, okay? So Microtrack, we can pull up that engine cat. We've already and and did the cat on that. Yeah, the, yeah, I think there's an engine module separate on seven version 17.10, maybe of the power cube and things like that, or 17, probably even 17.11. Okay. I think I, I broke it down into different modules with oh, cool. without the... Um, the the coupler and the pump and so on um so th there's a lot of parts and sub parts there uh i you said you're going to take the frame i'm curious that's going to determine a lot of the shape and it sounds like you want to use slats for all that uh, i guess there's there's different maybe parts of the frame i think before on some of the other tractor cabs and things like that we talked about using some lighter steel tubing is there anything like yeah. that that's cost effective you think for for this or you really you want to go with all like slats and or just the flats now, like you're doing, talking about okay what we want to do for for this is do six flats that are welded into a cube so so quarter by four steel get four sides out of that and when you weld six sides, sorry, mate, four pieces of that plug get you one side. But much, much. And show a that. picture of your three D printer. It's just basically that. But well, take a look at the power cube frame. That's it's the same thing. The the okay. So 3D you want printer. the golf cart to be very yeah. cube like, is what you're saying? Just yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Appropriate aspect ratio. Yeah. Okay. Well, because that has. Drops rollover protection built into it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, make it a cube. I mean, I'm looking at the other pictures of the golf carts, and you can see there, yeah, there's a lot of tubing and light stuff like that. Some of it's round, but you know, square, square tubing. But yeah, either way, cut. Um, yeah, like like but that, uh, that way. Some of the recent you designs of the frame. power cube. Yeah. Right. Um, do you want it? You think we want to get it a little bit less cubic, maybe trapezoidal, stuff like that? Yeah, less yeah. cubic, as in it's not going to be a cube because that won't work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a long cube, elongated cube kind of deal. Okay. Um, but I'll take that because I'm – I'll take that part. Okay. I'll take the frame. Yeah. Um, And how many I want to show. seats? Like, uh, you know, do you have a base idea? Are you thinking five by eight for this thing, um, or a little bigger? Yeah. Let's do five by ten. Five okay. by eight. Five by ten. Ten. Okay. Um, there we have eight. So, Katarina, what do you? Want? Five by ten. No, let's see if everything fits to size. Just, fits as we need it. Do you want like a? You're thinking like a single bench seat? Uh, look at the... Or you just got so confused, didn't you? Sometimes there's front and back, the seats that are front and back. And... Hey, it's already on slide 13. Oh, Hold them on. No. Let's see. Uh, slide number five. Look at that seat. Hey, you who... That, that's my better than that but a bench seat i'd say just a bench no back 
Back, yeah, back. Okay. <laughs> Do it yeah. better than that. We'll 3D print it. Sure. Um, okay, PowerCube Genealogy has the engine somewhere. So I'm going to say that um, I think that there's one thing we yeah. forgot to talk about. What's that? Um, we said that we were going to make the roof a solar panel. So the panel yeah. itself is the roof. So that has the, the cap has to be able to accommodate that. Yeah. You can be able to mount one or two solar panels, whatever size they are on it. Yeah, but that's already addressed because uh, if it's a frame, you can put the panel on top of it. Right, but it has to be right, okay. And if it's five feet wide, those panels are, okay, so let's look at the panel. Katarina, can you pull the panel off this, the CD home, the open source PV system? Can you take that from there? Because that's the same panel that we have in the shop. We can use that, probably a couple of those out of that. Okay. Okay, let me see if I can find it. I'll, I'm, I'm looking. It's on the open source PV system page on the wiki. Right. Oh, on the wiki. Okay. Yeah. Hey, did I hear you volunteering about the seat? Yeah, I can take the seat. Well, Katie's got the motors, the motor. Katie, are you finding anything? Yeah, I found the, the diagram from the manufacturer. It's posted in the chat. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is is make a new page in the work doc and paste it in there. Can you do that? Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Um, I am, while I was looking there, I see that they also offer hydraulic brakes. Is that something that we need separately or does the hydraulic motor oh. cover stopping the damn thing? It, it does because if you use this hyd hydraulic valve, if you put it into neutral position, it locks it. Oh, cool. Thank you. That's the cylinder valve. Yeah. Uh, I'm also going to add a pressure relief valve uh, in here because we don't want to be stop in place. We want to coast to a stop. So that's a pressure relief. relief valve. Oh, it doesn't work. We don't have an apartment. Okay, you're surprised. Um, Okay, we got the motor. Oh, um, surprised. Who wants to set in? Who's going to pull that engine in? Okay, so the work is about organizing information. If we have everything on the part library, on, someone can take that and work from it readily. So I, I want somebody to, to volunteer for the engine. Which, uh, someone can take that and copy that information with a picture on the open source golf cart wiki page part library. Sorry, did you say that again? I think you cut out. Okay. So we've got a working doc on a wiki. And we've got a part library on a wiki on open source golf cart wiki page. Um, we want to put the parts that we find, like ORCAD up, into the part library on the wiki. So that is a story of all the parts that people can download and put into a new designs if they want to make new designs. Of okay. Well. Should there yeah. sort of be just a separate area for links to separate working sheets or just the links to part information directly with headers for which part they apply to? Uh, say, I'm not understanding the question. Say so, should I, so should each part have a link to its own work doc? That well, in the work, mm -hmm. asking about the work doc, the work doc is organized well by pages, so you can put a title on each page. Okay. Like, it's good because any piece of the puzzle here can use a lot of supporting information. Right. So one page for like even one page per part is eventually good. Okay. 
Yeah. So now page has got an index on it. Uh, click on three, which is the part library. And that's where the things go into. So once you got it, uh, click on that to get the FreeCAD file. And, and you'd have to upload a picture in order for that picture to be appear as a picture. Um, we should have a slide on part library. And, so I'm going to put a slide on the part library. An organization question on the part library, I guess, would be how do you want to link, I guess, to a lot of the parts are previous existing and they're already in other part libraries. So I guess the question is how do we want to duplicate those, uh, just link to them or well, you you know, make embed it. copies? Just embed it because it's already on a wiki. Yeah. It takes no memory to do that. If it's already on a wiki, then you simply copy and paste from an existing part library, right? Does that make sense? And that way the picture and the file will be embedded into this part library. So the part libraries, the parts of the part libraries are portable between libraries. So I'm going to put a page on part libraries, how that works. Recording has stopped. Recording has stopped. Ooh. So... I guess um, the easy way to do that would be to say, go to the gallery and edit the gallery, and you can just copy the elements from the other gallery. Recording is on. To the new gallery, and it'll yeah. show up just like it does on the other gallery. That's one way to do it. Yep. Uh, besides just linking to the whole page. Exactly. Exactly. You want to do it modular at the level of each part. So each is considered as a unit. That's the key to. This is modular breakdown method. You break everything into the smallest piece that's used. Like even a single nut should be a part in the part library. It should because then you're not guessing what kind of part it is. And when you want to do something with it in a CAD, you already have it. You don't have to worry about what its specs are. Um, so that's the power of the part libraries, uh, which... We definitely want to emphasize. Okay. I think we need a video on a part library, how that works. Because uh, we don't have one on that. Martin? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so I can't yeah. find any link directly to the panels that we bought, only a link to Sun Elect in general and a bunch of other resources, but no information as to exactly what we have. Well, clearly it's in a working document of the open source TV page. TV system page, right? Open source what page? Let me point you to that. Which um, one? Okay, P, capital P, 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 capital V. It's going to be the, <clears throat> the working document. Can you see my... Well, which part? None of it is labeled working okay, no, document. Then then work doc There's oh, final, one. initial, Let's initial. Let's see. I think it's an initial. Yeah, um, it is an initial. So, um, yeah, it's on slide number 20, like 20, 20. Uh, the specs of it are on slide number uh, 17, the initial working dot on the doc on the open source PV system page. Uh, okay. Let me send the link to that. Um, paste in the chat box. The chat box is a direct link. Uh, I'm looking at 17 and I don't see it. I mean, I see it on 20. Oh, module weight dimensions. Is that it? In millimeters? Slide number 17. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. looking at. Yeah. 
dimensions will get you what we have to draw up. That's 1650 by 990. It's the one in millimeters? What, uh, 1650 by 990 by 28, the one in millimeters? Yeah. Okay. That's 1.65 meters, which is in feet, that is uh, 5.4 feet, which means that will rest on top of the frame, which is five feet. So that's good. Right. Oh, okay. So here's the, the next slide 18 has it in inches. So 65 inches by 39 inches. 5.5 by 3.3. Yeah. Yep. So can you go into FreeCAD and draw cut up the, the panel? You can do it as a... No. As a, you know. Yeah, you can. No. Okay. Um, we'll give it to you for extra credit. Uh -huh. And a reward. Right. Okay. Um, continuing. Okay, so we got the PV panel. So that's... Um, Katrina got the solar panel. Um, can you, Katrina, put the solar panel in the part library by putting a, uploading an image of that panel? Um, image? Like okay, you can even no, just... Okay, here, let me give you a picture. It's under... Uh... Okay, this is good. Okay, can you... Martin, where is the part library? Yeah. Where? I, I don't, you have to understand, like, I'm not familiar with any of these processes. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, I mean, send, so a link, there's a link here in a chat box to the, directly to the panel that we used. The idea of the part library is that on a wiki, there's a function called gallery, and in it you can put a bunch of images that lie side by side. Um, so, I mean, on page number two, so example of a part library would be. Oh, okay. I see it. I see it now. Okay. Thank you, Abe. Yeah. Um, I, I just noticed on the wiki page there, it needs to be edited some more, I guess, and I think only one person can edit it that at the time. So uh, it, oh, it doesn't have yeah. a table of contents, actually. I was just noticing that it, it would be more uh, probably readable if it had that. It Which already does. It, Refresh. It does, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Did I? Oh, got it. Okay. So for the part library, we can, like, since that's going to be like our main working part, we're going to, we can break it down into like, um, yeah, you can break it down into things like the, the frame, frame and structure, definitely break it into power, like power cube section. Um, human use, human interface, human usability features. <laughs> like you might have a C, for example. <laughs> that would be, definitely be the seat and a uh, electric start. And the cab. Uh, that would be the cab. Like cab cover, mm -hmm. uh, lights. The windshield. Windshield. No. Windshield. Yeah, a body, uh, which could be three D printed later, so we can superpose a body on it. Body panels. So we got to get that cubic meter printer running. But right now we're looking. It looks like the three D printer is going to be as a workshop at Col University of Colorado Boulder in uh, June or July. I'm talking to uh, them. The cargo area? The cargo area? Cargo bay? 
Okay. Yeah. Cargo area. Okay, so we missed all these parts in um, in our overall uh, modular breakdown. So maybe can you add a couple of these? No, okay. we didn't. We didn't miss those. There's the okay. cap, cap cover. I missed mine. Oh, the, the windshield is part of the cab, no? No, separate it. That's going to be a separate okay. part. I'm really trying to break it down to the part of how we build this thing. So lights okay. will be separate. Oh, lights, yeah. I got that. Hey, we could have a solar fan. That will be very easy. Solar Total fan? fan. Mm-hmm. We don't want heat from the power cube in the heat of the summer. Um, no, I think that's okay. <laughs> no, I guess if we're moving like, I mean, even at 13 miles per hour, that, that we probably don't need a fan. <laughs> that's like, that's, that's a lead addition. I think getting a little yeah. beyond the, the scope. No, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Okay. Um, so the part library, just to talk about the part library, the example is on page number two. It's a gallery function on the wiki. Click edit to see how it works. To see syntax, to see HTML. Um, yeah, so we can copy like a whole thing from an existing part library. So for example, uh, power tractor construction set part library. We should have a page called Power Cube Art Library, right? Let's see. Is it? I just, no, I just pasted no. the link. Power oh, yeah, Cube there it is. Library. Yeah, okay. There. So the Power Cube Library has the engine in it. Let's rip the engine out by deleting things in the tree. That, oh, that's really good. Thanks, Abe. That's, uh, actually, that's pretty uh, comprehensive there. This is amazing. Okay. And in a few years, when we have like parts for everything, we're, we'll literally be able to fly on this. Um, that's good. Oh, there's that small power cube. How about we borrow that? See, I'd like to borrow that part. Um, I'm going to put that into the golf cart part library. Let's see if I caught it. Oh, there. Okay, so for, so for example, if you hit refresh, look at what happened just now for the power cube thing. So that's actually, we can borrow that whole thing. That's just the engine with the pump. Um, And that we can use use as the modular engine unit. And now, um, we want to make a separate mother power cube, which we don't have.
the mother power cube meaning the hydraulic reservoir and cooling part. Um, Yeah, I think that small cube, it's assembled pretty well. Uh, I guess the only thing you yeah. might need to be deleted from it is the uh, cooler, that kind of thing. Yeah. And that, it could be smaller because of that, I guess, but it, it, it should be pretty pretty good to go other than that. Yeah, that's um, that's right. Um, and we want to put in like the completed power cube, like you have there, and then the separate parts, like just the engine, if we want to modify things. So I'm gonna borrow the engine and frame from another place. Pretty Pretty soon we'll be able to cut and paste ourselves into full design. Uh, if we have enough of these parts. So in the part libraries, you can put parts, assemblies, and finished big things. Now, what kind of tires are we going to use? I'd say just regular, like, car wheels, which are cheap and uh, accessible, like sedan-sized. Um, Nathan, can you add the wheels to, to this? Nathan, are you there? No, Nathan. I don't see Nathan anymore. What about Jan? Can you um, add the wheel? Me? I don't see anything on the on my screen. Just faces. Um. Jan, can I get you to the tires? find ourselves wheels like or draw them up uh, like basically like 60 you can start with the ones on <clears throat> part page um i think the one pick up no that's probably too big pick up tire probably too big uh jen can you find us some or draw us some wheel cad like a cylinder but the bigger picture is put that into the part library. That's a placeholder. Can I ask you to do that, Jen? I'm on my Chromebook. I don't, I can't do it. Chromebook? Sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't have yes. my Linux. I don't have my Linux up, uh, machine up yet. Here we're not. Hmm. Yeah. If you have a Chromebook, <clears throat> You can still do that. Can you find a? Uh, can you see if you can find a set of wheels on GrabCAD? A step file. A step if file on GrabCAD. Grab okay, I'll go see what I can find. Yeah. On this uh, seat or bench, uh, I'm kind of roughing it up. 
but I'm, I'm wondering if uh, maybe kind of a frame, if it would be easier to actually use something uh, besides just metal after the metal frame, maybe it'd be easier to use like plywood and then put some kind of, you know, actual pat or kind of padding on a stick on it for just some comfortability. Uh, plywood, yeah. plywood might make it easier to do that and just put plywood in a frame. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Way to do it. Uh, okay. So, sorry to interrupt, uh, Martin. You know, I already linked a couple attire files on GrabCAD. They're on slide six. I don't know right, if they have the right. Like, yeah, but now looking back at that, they're truck truck tires. That's too big. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Smaller. All right. We can still keep them there for reference, but they're too big. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Katrina, are you trying to do the the solar panel? What do you mean? Um, set up a placeholder for it in the part library. Oh yeah, I can do that. I mean, uh, are you gonna see, you just put an image of it? Can yeah. Okay, is the is the page filled up? Can I can I edit? Of course. Could somebody share this? Well, they demonstrate. Cannot be editing at the same time. Yeah, but someone will lose their editing. Um. Yeah, it's kind of. But but definitely nobody's editing right now. No, like I, I edited a few times, okay. but I didn't have any conflicts. Okay. Um. Okay, I think I'm gonna, let's see. Um, Katie, am I seeing the, the motor? Are you looking for a stubbed page that's empty? I've just started creating it. I didn't, <clears throat> and then I have oh, I have it and, slide the link. Oh, Sorry. and just to know, in the uh, Google Doc. Oh yeah, I posted uh, the link underneath the one that you put on page five. Okay. Um, which I can make a separate page in the presentation. I was doing a yeah, yeah. Work, work page on yeah, this. that way. Yeah, yeah, please do. I'll do both. And because for one, that's a full document. We got to, do you know which one it is? Yeah, you have to pick out the right one. From yeah, there. yeah, I, I found the right one. It's uh, page 10 of, I think it looks the same as the link that you put on the presentation. Nice. I followed that to the manufacturer. They have a manual with specs for all of their motors of this type. Yeah. 
um, yeah, and I found the right um, series. So I'm pretty confident that this is the right diagram. Very good. Let me screen cap it just so that we know that we have it and it's not just a link to a PDF. Mm, yep. Thousand pound, yeah. Looking at that catalog there, it looks like the shaft of that motor can hold a thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great, yeah. Wheel mounts.
That's pretty good. Okay, so it's 2.17, we're an hour into it. We're gonna go till three, but let me just review the kind of the workflow. So what we've done so far is broken down the thing on page three into as many modules as we can do. And we're trying to translate those into meaningful dimensional CAD, which means technical drawings that we then take to our repo repository, which is gonna be the page on a wiki called open source golf cart which has the part library in it at this point i see three pictures of the power cube in there in the part library but the goal is to embed a picture and an actual cad file to substantiate that picture at the at the part library so if in the next 45 minutes maybe you can do like even if you don't finish it just seed it. So maybe upload the first version of the file. Like for example, if you're working on a motor, you got that faceplate that you just drew out. Out. Yeah, put that up there as um, um, things like that, so that we have a picture and a downloadable file. That means if you disappeared, somebody else could take exactly where you left off, and that work is not bottlenecked in, on um, on your computer. So you get it up to the internet, then wherever you are, you can have somebody else work on it. An the idea there is like, well, how do you know you don't get into conflict even if you have low coordination? Like say you uploaded the CAD and you say, well, what if somebody is gonna upload it and there's gonna be an edit conflict because they did another version. So what you do for that you just check if there's an upload like after yours when you start working on something just see if somebody did something yet and if so download that new version if not you're assuming that okay yours is the latest version and you're doing the latest work so that's kind of a rough way to think about it uh, but the idea of how do you control that kind of process with many many people gets complicated uh, they have this checkout system in professional CAD packages. We could, you know, at one point add that to FreeCAD. But at present, the simple idea of upload as soon as you have something is our working principle. So I'm going to work on a frame now. Um, I try to add the hydraulic motor to the part like the very I'm just going to back out, mind my own business. 
and try it again. I did it. Oh, there's already motor in there. Right now. I told her for the motor is there already. How tall is this thing going to be? Um, for the frame. We said 5 feet 7 inches minus the wheels. Um, I say about 4 feet.
frame. Five, eight.
zero 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 enter position That's zero, zero, zero. Ah. Oh, yeah. Wow.
know you. No. Kind of worked. Not really. I'd like to declare that I've got the first frame iteration up there. If you refresh the open source golf cart, I must admit it's the most amazing, but it's also wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to redo that. I uh, thought I had a cunning trick to do it, but I'm going to do it out of six individual sides. I try to do a solid and poke holes through that, but it ends up with beams, not angles. can take a look at that if you want, but okay, I'm going to start from scratch here, I think. Um,
everybody updated on what's going on. You can put in a slide for your thing, what you're working on uh, to show immediate results. Like, for example, look at this, this immediate result on the frame. That's the base of the frame. So you can kind of keep people up to speed where you're at, and that keeps the excitement. <laughs> really keeps the excitement level up. Um, moving on to the second side. So I need to make three things like that. Six of them will make a complete frame. But that shows the process. So it's actually useful to capture the process, how these things are built. Hey, can anybody hear me? Yeah. Well, hey, um, so the screen sharing isn't actually working. Is it, uh, do you have it turned off? No, it's, um, oh. I'll check it's bandwidth. Okay. I'm, um, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Do you want to share yours? Um, I haven't been able to figure out how to do that. I'll keep working on it. I think uh, maybe I'll try Chrome instead. What you got that you're going to show? Oh, I have nothing to show, really. I just wanted to get it working. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Whoa, we've got some exciting bench seat coming right up.
Holy cow, I've got the second side. Not messing around anymore. Holy cow.
Okay, we're getting close to the finish line here. Um, so I want to start wrapping it up. If you guys take a look at my screen, can, can people see my screen? We can't see your screen. Yeah, well, Okay, maybe bandwidth issues, but uh, if you go to the open source golf cart page, I put in a, my frame to the to the library, and it's we've got a three sided frame right now, but where the three sides meet, there's an angle, the effective angle. So that's that's how it looks. Uh, I tried to upload the latest image. I see there. I think there's a bug on this. No, there it is. If you go to the history of the gcframe.png, it shows the latest. Yeah, you should be able to see. Does it, does it consist of three sides? If you refresh, or does it consist of, of six sides? You said open source golf cart page. How do we find that? It's three-sided. So if you go first to the um, open source golf cart page at the bottom in yeah. the frame and structure, there's frame file GC yeah. frame. And yeah. before it had all six sides, but now it's only three. It's like an open yeah, thing in the back. That's good. So that's open source golf cart page on the wiki. Just as it says, you can see it in the recent wiki changes, Jen. So Jen, if you, yeah, the working pages on recent wiki changes. Uh, okay, so let's kind of review where we're at. So um, going back to slide number four, got some progress. So cab frame is one half done, actually. <laughs> got three sides of six. Um, and my product demo is right on slide number three. Uh, so there it is. I went from a single side to two sides to three sides. And it's actually useful to keep that there because an average sucker would take uh, angle and try to weld a frame out of that. And I can guarantee you that this method, what I'm showing here, is self-aligning and will be much easier than starting from angle. And that's by learning uh, to do that with all the frames that we've done. But I've got three frames out of six. And... It's useful to kind of see the, the screenshots because you see how the process goes one by one, step by step. So I just got to copy those parts to the other sides and that's a full frame. Uh, and that's up on a wiki at the part library. So if you go to the part library on the wiki, that is already there. So no, anybody can take that and take it from there. So now we made it accessible globally. Uh, can anybody else report on where they are? Did anyone, uh, Katie, did you do a block of that motor yet or? I am working on the block. I'm having a little bit of trouble. I'm using the um, OpenCAD 1.6 on my Mac since I have it available. Uh, so yeah. like the workflow is a little bit different. Um, I have uh, it to the dimensions of the schematic that I, well, so I have the schematic that I found and I have it as a layer and I can edit my model there, but it's being really stupid like I might, image is blocking anything that I create in draft mode. So I'll look at that, but at least I have upload it. The... Upload it. Hey, as we finish up this meeting, can yep. you try to upload it to the sure. GC wheel motor that Yeah, I can definitely do that. Do that. And then, then that way we can collaborate. I see Abe has an absolutely epic bench seat. Absolutely epic. That's, that's all I got to say. Um, hey, but I don't see that uploaded to the part library. Um, so Abe, hey, can you upload it to the part library? That would be great. Um, any comments on it?
Abe, we can't hear you, if you in case you're trying to speak. Oh, okay. Um, I had my mic muted wrong. Uh, I, yeah, I got it pretty well done, actually. I think I, I, I hope it's uh, it may need to be edited for size and in the shape. I got an angle on the back a little bit. It, I just kind of made it with sketches and clones of parts yeah. to do it quick, and uh, it, it should be pretty easy to change the arrangement and the size as necessary. I made it uh, well a foot. I made it only four feet wide because I figured maybe uh, six inches on either side if the vehicle is five feet for uh, a step area. But then again, I guess you could put different step points on the vehicle to step in if necessary or something like that. So Is that be, supposed to be steel? Yes. I figure it's still yeah. four, four inch slats uh, uh, by quarter inch. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. probably actually pretty heavy, actually. I, I wasn't sure if you could use something lighter than quarter inch, but that's probably easiest, right? And yeah, I mean, maybe uh, there's some other... I don't know, like... What happened to the wood version? Is that you don't think? We well, should... I figured we'll just put some. Uh, I mean, it could be plywood, or just put put plywood on the back. Just bolt the pieces of plywood with. Uh, if you want a comfortable, you know, seat with some foam on it, the easy way to put foam or whatever on is on wood, right? So you just, um, you know, there's different ways to do uh, upholstery for seats, if that's. Uh, yeah. You know, ideal because it, it's easier to. It's usually done on a piece of wood, and then that gets bolted to your frame. Okay, now that wherever there's a single layer without an angle, that's just gonna bend. Like the back and the front is gonna completely bend, and the sides are gonna bend like just like yeah. butter. Okay. So we it's need to weld it. It needs some support. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If we're gonna do metal. Do a cube, a six-sided cube. Then it will reinforce the bottom where it, wherever it's sitting on the bottom. Uh, it's one way to do it. Uh, if you want it like the simplest construction, cube it. Not one one quarter by four. I would even go quarter by two. Okay, two inches wide slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, steel bands like wherever you don't have it like the front piece of that. That's just gonna uh, sit on it and it's going to drop like four inches because steel is not strong in that way. Yeah. I figure the bottom of this would just end up getting welded to the, the base plate frame. Um, so I figured the, the bottom that way would be uh, permanently welded, but I guess it could be bolted on to make it more modular. So maybe some different... I would do, uh, for this, I would do a elongated cube and bolt it to the base if we want to go pretty simple... Um, and then it could be like, you can put plywood on the inside of that and that'll be a, a box seat. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to leave space, uh, underneath, like I didn't necessarily want to make like a single sheet. We have to cut out a hole for like the front or the sides, because I figured you want that under seat yeah. space for storage and things like that. Yeah. That's easier to fit things under. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I see Katie just uploaded this. I'm just going to check it out, see what yeah, we've got here. There in there. Basic sketch. Do we have one? Whoa. That's great. <laughs> um, so you got a thing on a, yeah, I mean, that's cool. So let's see, do you have any sketches there? Or? There's a rectangle behind it. Oh, yes. There we go. Mm -hmm. There you go. So this is cool. Like here, what you can do right there. So if you go into Sketcher, um, you can start tracing right on top of that. And that's the cool part about how yeah. Sketcher works. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that like right now. Oh, man, that's great. Now, do you know why I can't see what I'm tracing? Like, why is it behind this image? I can't figure out how to. I don't know. I tried XY plane and mm -hmm. it's working for me. Oh, okay. 
Um, so that is really cool. Now, if that is at the scale, so let, let me see if I can, has anyone seen, seen my screen before or? Cause, uh, I'm seeing your video right now. So there's enough bandwidth probably. So if you show your okay. screen. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. Can you see my screen now? Yes. I see Excellent. That. Yeah, I'm tracing that and this is perfect. That's, it's oh. exactly what you do for reverse engineering. Yeah. Except this one point, we got to maybe move that back in. Um, and then I can just take circles and I can put those bolt patterns in there. Uh, now, I don't know what scale this is in terms of the actual picture that was pasted into the FreeCAD. But if it were to scale, then the, then the reverse engineering of it would be bam you you reverse engineer it right off technical drawings that you find online which is very useful so here i'm going to go to close that sketch selecting that sketch extrude it out and um extrude that out to one inch yeah i um, that, i hung placed. myself up did that did somebody answer the question that's millimeters is the number and um, inches in square brackets yeah cool cool um hey, it's extruded look at that we just extruded something a little bit of reverse engineering 101 right here now let's see like if i do the measurement like what what is the actual scale i'm at here so i'm measuring that and it's showing me 3.58 inches that's close uh, cause that, that should be 4.85. So let's see, can we, if it's, that's an interesting question. Can we scale the picture back to be actual correct scale? It's often easier to constrain. Uh, I think or sometimes it's easier to constrain if you do it as you make it. So if, when you start with a square, you constrain that and then you add your arcs and other details and just keep constraining each piece as you make it uh, as it gets more complex a lot of times it's harder to constrain I would say that's usually the case yeah it doesn't address the scale issue the how do we address scale, the scale issue see for the th thickness no for the actual size uh, it's 4.85 in the real dimension and my measurement it says 3.58 oh. inches well the measurement let's see which tool that used the um yeah okay so that ruler tool that ruler tool tends to be yeah. inaccurate depending on the position if you use the tape uh what is it the part bench tape rule it will give you the exact dimensions of whatever the sketch part is is it is it Where's possible to scale the image first if we're going to use this tracing yeah. workflow yeah i would do that. that i would do that i would find first of all the scale how do you scale the image that's a good question i don't usually use the the uh, trace yeah. and i i like that though i i don't uh i usually haven't done it that way with the draft. we should recommend this to what we should do yeah i would suggest that the method is we take the measurement off the reverse engineering and generate a scale factor for the for the you put what is that like a png or a jpeg yeah it's a jpeg so you got a jpeg then you go into a thing like what would you do oh yeah uh, like preview GIMP. or whatever and scale it by a specific percentage yeah so if you yeah. well if you go to gimp um does gimp allow you to scale an image yeah i think so right so we'd have to figure out a lot of tools that you scale, scale images of I think GIMP is pretty accurate for that because it lets yeah. you scale so many pixels and inches. Um, also, so let's, I would think that FreeCAD would have somewhere an option for that, you know, because it's a draft. You do. I mean, we have tool. There's a scale tool within FreeCAD, but I haven't figured out how to use that well yet. Yeah, um, since it's a. It should be pretty easy, image. but I'm not sure. It may be easier to do it in GIMP. Since the scaling process is a little more complicated, I think it might be easier to draw it to the correct size. 
potentially like by just scaling the sheet of paper that we're drawing from. Yeah. Um, so I would probably say, okay, let's put that into GIMP. Uh, so that's good learnings. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do a copy. Katie, would you mind uploading your screenshot, the JPEG as well? Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So someone else could do that. You don't get to that. Um, <clears throat> sort of uh, logistically, if if I upload that, I have a link at the bottom of the open source golf cart page that is for the 5.4 CU hydraulic motor stock part. Uh -huh. um, so I could, but I don't know if like, we're just keeping it like as part of the um, part li library of the golf cart page itself. Well, I was, yeah, you can put all kinds of supporting files okay. down there. The idea would be for somebody to replicate your free CAD file. Like, I don't know how to extract that. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if I wanted to scale that image, I right. can't get it on a free CAD, or I don't know how to do that. Um, so if you give the source image as a supporting file, then I can recreate what you have done and scale that, so we can actually. Okay, get I'll the, put I'll put it on that page then. Yeah, um, but in the meantime, I'll just make a note here that. Uh, so yeah, reverse engineering one hundred and one. I'm gonna let's see. So I'm gonna put that next to uh Part libraries, or just duplicate that page, slide, duplicate, slide. So reverse engineering. The reverse engineer. Uh, paste in a tech drawing. Find out its scale. Scale it in GIMP. Correct scale. Re reinsert into FreeCAD. and reverse engineer it from it. Like below. Scale be below is off. Is off. 3.6 inch versus 4.85 inches for the actual yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Um, so here we go. Um, that's good stuff. Anyone else <clears throat> got any li part library additions? Let's see. So I see um, we've got the hydraulic motor free CAD. We've got the frame up there. And three more. But so whoever, if you did start anything, please put that up into the part library uh, that we can throw out. Um, let's see who else. Abe, Seat, Katrina. Do you, Katrina, are you still there? Do you, did you get the solar panel into the library? Or no, Katarina dropped off. No, she, she's still there. Um, yeah, Katarina, do you have one or not really? 
Okay, so in any case, we've got some progress on, on this beautiful design on the open source golf cart. It requires a little bit more work on getting the other parts in there. We got a, a little bit. Um, so the next steps are what? Keep working on a CAD for, for anyone who's who started it and keep populating the part library with actual CAD files. And to be continued is the is the word. Let's see, how do we leave this party with a bang? So we will, um, let's see, what are our next steps on this? That would be a good question. Next steps are to continue integrating the design with the frame and everything else. So continue working on individual CAD files and uh, finding other CAD files online and putting them into an overall assembly. So once we have the individual parts, we can put them into an overall assembly. And it would help. So if we had many more people to, to do this and an orientation about how the process works here, we could get a lot of this thing done in a pretty decent time. But missing link right now is having more people. OK, so. To wrap up, well, we'll continue working on this uh, as far as the individual CAD files and keep uploading things to the wiki uh, and report on this on the social media. And I guess for the people on the dev team, so we'll see you on Tuesday again. And Katie and others, thank you for participating. Any questions or like, can you, Katie, maybe um, follow up with doing that workflow that we discussed? Would you have some time to do that? um the workflow of of scaling an image scale that. yeah scale that and get it to the right scale so sure. that it appears in actually the correct dimensions and then actually you know if you draw that face plate that'll be a good start with the correct dimensions okay um yeah we can do that that'll be great and then we can learn from you as far as did that process work with gimp okay yeah sounds good yep okay well uh, so we'll continue working on this, and thanks, everybody, for participating. And uh, let's see, as far as I, I'd say, let's continue working on this for like a couple of weeks. I would say let's let's hold another uh, small design sprint like this in a couple of weeks to see where we are if we pulled in all the files. And hopefully we get towards a finished design in like a couple of weeks. So um, we'll, we can begin building that. All right, uh, so so let's plan on about two weeks from now having another another session like this on Friday, and otherwise we'll see you all at the at the dev meeting. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. All right. Recording has stopped. Good meeting. Yeah. Let's pull this up on the. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I was just saying good good design sprint. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for participating and yeah, uh, who got the who got the complete recording of this? We can I, post it. I thing. have I haven't stopped the recording yet, so it should be good. Uh, the audio Excellent. was good on the last one. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but I, I tweaked the settings more. I still had to to like retranscode it um, and I had yeah. to edit it a little in Caden just because I didn't Recorder, but the OBS, the Open Broadcast software, works uh, pretty good. I think the main issue is different possible bugs in some of the software and the way they use Pulse Audio and Alsa Audio, mm -hmm. which are different things in Ubuntu. I think that's really what where the bugs are with Voco Screen or something like that. But I don't understand it. Sometimes they say that the uh, applications. Uh, Integration with also or Pulse can be a little bit off, and that causes problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, if I could free up some space on my um, uh, Dropbox, I probably could record as well. But yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll um, 
I'll just upload it, I guess, to my YouTube. It could be copied from there uh, or something like that. That's usually the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thanks, baby. thanks everybody. So we'll see you. We'll see you soon, and hopefully uh, do this again in two weeks and kind of finalize, try to finalize some of the design, design work. Take okay. care, everybody. Yep. Later. Bye bye.